Hey everybody, this is Craig from OrgSpring, and in this presentation we are going to discuss cloud computing for nonprofits. We're going to cover things like what is the cloud, what you need to know about it. We're going to cover some benefits to you, why you as a nonprofit might want to use the cloud and how it might make you more efficient. Some of the costs associated with using the cloud and different cloud providers. We're going to discuss the different options you have in terms of uh, different types of clouds, uh, different types of file storage, and different types of collaboration methods. And then in the live version of this presentation, we'll take uh, some question and answer. If you're watching this online or if you're uh, looking at a video or a slide presentation, obviously we're not going to do a live Q&A, but you can submit your questions through YouTube, our website, or through the slide presentation, and we will answer them in the comments. So everyone gets to participate in terms of Q&A for their particular organization. Just a quick note about OrgSpring and our team. We're basically a team of techies. We do a lot of website design. We do some grant writing and tech support for websites. Everything we do is based around uh, online usage for nonprofits. Our mission as a nonprofit ourselves is to help you achieve your mission and accomplish your mission online. We do that through websites, tech support, online fundraising, things like that. And obviously, a, the cloud is a big part of what we do online, and that's why we're discussing it here today. We do believe it will make you more efficient. It makes us more efficient. And rather than doing what a lot of other people are doing right now about the cloud in terms of presentations, just telling you what it is and showing you how it works, we're actually going to get into some real-world examples, uh, real-world examples of how nonprofits are using it, how we've used it ourselves, and how we've used it with some of our nonprofit partners. But we're also going to go a step further. We're not just going to discuss how it's used or how some nonprofits are using it. We're going to show you exactly how it made them more efficient, and in a lot of cases, how it made them money and made them less reliant on foundation funding. They're using it as an entrepreneurial venture as well. And, and that, to me, is really where the power of cloud technology is for nonprofits today. So what is the cloud then? Well, basically, it helps to understand a little bit of the technology, and then we'll talk a little bit about what the cloud is not in terms of helping you to frame it. So cloud computing describes a new paradigm in which people are increasingly accessing software, computer power, and files over the web instead of on their desktops. Now, that's the pretty Wikipedia encyclopedia type definition, but what you need to pull from that is basically, rather than having a file stored locally on your desktop, you're having files stored on the web in some sort of server farm in a building out there that you could access anywhere you have internet. So if you have the internet, you could pull your file down. You no longer need to have big storage hard drives or network drives in your office in a server room. You can access everything you need through a server located online. That's the basic idea of the cloud. So it helps to differentiate this from maybe your, your traditional network. If you recall, or maybe if you have a current traditional network, you probably have a server room. If it's a small organization, it might just be a network attached drive to your computer. If it's a large organization, you might even have a network room, a small closet, or even a big room with lots of servers and IT staff. But the main idea is that you have some sort of staff. Your employee or employees can access it through a local drive, like a Z drive on Windows or some attached drive on Mac or other systems. You have the ability for your IT to help or service that network. And then you might even have end user access set up uh, through a VPN or through some sort of secure access. Now, there are some traditional network uses really uh, include just two things, storage and retrieval. What you would use typically for a traditional network is to store your files and then to retrieve them directly from your desktop. Or if your network is savvy enough, you can retrieve them from, say, a VPN if you're working from home. Uh, that really is the first kind of entree to, to using the cloud. But uh, most of the time, your traditional network includes just storage and retrieval. Now, there are some issues with this type of network setup. For one, there's a high cost of entry. You have to go out and buy those big servers, which can cost thousands of dollars. And in cases of really large organizations, it can cost tens of thousands of dollars. If you do have a larger organization, you'll need staff, particularly IT staff. And those people have a technological um, benefit or experience to them, and they charge for that. So it is a high cost of overhead as well to maintain that staff. 
even if you can maintain a full-time staff, you need to maintain IT consultants, and those people can be even more expensive. Typically speaking, your traditional network is just for access within your building or within your, your organization. It's typically not given to uh, access to outside individuals for security reasons. Obviously, this can be added with more sophisticated servers, which then, of course, increases the cost of entry and also the cost of overhead. So typically speaking, your general network issue includes inaccessibility. You could just access it via the office. If anyone's worked with VPN, they know it's a pain to use. It's not as fast as it would be if you accessed via the office. So these are your traditional network issues. Now we start getting into the cloud. A couple years ago, Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, which is a multi-billion dollar cloud company now, and one of the first to really adopt this technology for their database, said this, the cloud services companies of all sizes. The cloud is for everyone. The cloud is a democracy. Now he doesn't mean it's a political democracy. He means democracy in terms of the ability for all to use it or to have an equal say. Years ago, uh, and we're not talking many years ago, we're only talking a few years ago, cloud technology was, or I should say network server technology was very expensive. It was expensive, like I just mentioned in the, the traditional network issues slide. It was expensive to have a big network and to run a network for your employees. And that prohibits a lot of organizations from getting into network usage. If they don't have the resources to maintain a network and to pay staff, they can't have a real network. They can't have a secure network or a private network. And this is a problem. It affects data collection. It affects data analysis. It affects data sharing. And that affects downstream things like programs or the inability to really uh, dig into the numbers or the data of your programs, which for nonprofits can affect how you get grant money. If you don't have the data to back up your programs, you're not going to be able to get the grant money to continue funding your programs. What Mark Benioff means in terms of the cloud being a democracy is because the cloud is so affordable and, and you're taking use of efficiencies of scale, it is no longer available just to those organizations with major resources. It is available for everyone. If you are a one person organization working out of your house, you can use the cloud and you can use it affordably. In many cases, you could use it for free. For larger organizations, the cloud is completely scalable. So you don't have to worry about having a platform that's not going to be powerful enough for you. So in that regard, democracy means it can be used for people and organizations with a lot of resources, and it can still be used for organizations that don't have all those resources. It's a fantastic, fantastic technological development. So this is uh, really the cloud. It doesn't look lofty and it's certainly not in the sky, but this is a room uh, probably tucked away in some uh, building in, in South Jersey somewhere, but this is basically the cloud. It takes your server and basically takes hundreds and even millions of server applications and uh, just puts it out there. So your information exists in, in some memory cells of, of one of these data banks. This is the cloud. Basically, it's the same as what you have inside your building, but on a much bigger scale and it's out there for you to access via the internet. Again, you don't need to have it locally on your computer. You can save space on your own networks, on your own drives, and you can make this completely shareable across the internet. So then the cloud is for much more than what your traditional network is for. Of course, you have access to things like storage and retrieval. You can store your files and retrieve them back down to your computer, either in real time on the cloud, or you can also download those files and have them locally for transporting but it's also for sharing. Most cloud applications allow you to share files with just a link. So instead of emailing somebody a 50 megabyte presentation file, you just email them a link, a direct link to that file which exists on the cloud. This takes up much less space on your computer, much less space on the other person's computer, and gives them access to your files securely anywhere they have internet access. It also allows to, you to collaborate. I'll give you an example of something we did recently. Using Google Docs in Google Drive, we pulled up a document and I shared a document with somebody in California. I'm located in Pittsburgh. And the two of us worked on a document directly together at the same time. And that file was saved in just one place. Neither one of us had it on our computer. And we were able to see that document and our changes in real time as we were typing. We wrote a grant together and we finished it in the course of one weekend. 
And that grant ended up making that organization $20,000. So it's a very powerful collaboration tool. Also, you deal with security, which is a big issue. People are afraid of upgrading to the cloud because they're afraid their information is going to be out there for everyone to see. In fact, using the cloud actually makes your documents more secure because they're behind logins. In some cases, multi-factor logins, uh, authorization type logins, and that is more secure than just having something on your individual network where people can take it, download it, steal it, share it with the world and run away with it. So the cloud has several advantages over your typical network. Again, these are some of the benefits of life in the cloud, specifically for your nonprofit. You take advantage of the efficiencies of scale. These large cloud companies are able to take your little network device and multiply that by thousands or many millions of times. They have the ability to give you much more space at a lower cost because of their low overhead. And that lower cost is passed on to you. So instead of paying $10,000 a year to maintain your small network for a couple hundred gigabytes or terabytes of space, you pay only a few dollars a month to get that same amount of space without the IT staff. You just call the cloud company for support and you have all of the same access plus much more security, a lot faster access to your files and all of the support and tech you need. We talked for a moment about security and how people were afraid of putting their information in the cloud and what that might mean. Well, Microsoft did a study with a lot of organizations, including nonprofits, and you'll see the link to that organization down at the bottom of this slide. What they experienced, 62% of organizations that switched from their own networks to the cloud, 62% of those organizations experienced a higher degree of privacy. They had more granular control over who is able to see and access their documents in the cloud. They could no longer just share a folder or share a drive. They were actually able to share which users had access to which files and for how long. An amazing amount of control over the privacy. They were also able to experience 75% of these organizations experienced higher reliability. They were using servers that were more accurate, more recent, uh, a lot faster than what they had in their own network solutions. So their documents were available online and they were available uh, with much more reliability. And the big one here is security, which may be surprising to you, but 94% of users who switched to the cloud experienced a higher level of security. And there's a few reasons for this. When you buy a network, it's expensive. When you have that in your office, it's expensive to maintain, but it's also expensive to keep up with the software. Some of these software server packages can cost thousands of dollars depending on the number of users you have. And you might need to upgrade that every year to make sure you have the latest patches so that your network is secure. As time goes on, hackers and other people find security loopholes and they're able to attack your data and steal that data. When you're using the cloud, that's not a problem. That's part of what you pay for. You pay for having the most up-to-date version of the software and the server software that you're using in the cloud. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to upload it. You don't have to maintain it. It's done for you automatically. So right there, you're experiencing a much, you're experiencing a much more secure environment for your data. Not to mention as time goes on, you don't have to buy any of these updates. They're done automatically. So you get them for free included in your service because everyone has their own login and you can control who can see or have access to your data. It is a much more secure situation. You're also able to do more with less. 70% of the organizations that switch to the cloud said that they were able to take time, money, and energy that they had previously invested into maintaining their own servers. And they were able to take that and push that into developing new programs. This is huge for nonprofits. This is the reason we get into the nonprofit business, to develop programs to help other people and other organizations. 70%, that's seven out of 10 organizations that switched to the cloud, were able to take the time, energy, and money they put into server maintenance, which is something you don't want to spend your time on, and they put that into developing new programs and helping more people. It's an amazing statistic for jumping into the cloud, and it's a great reason for your organization to get on board with it as well. 
What the cloud allows you to do in summary is to get out of this kind of cubicle rat race where you're stuck at your desk and your data is chained to your desk and only accessible there. The cloud makes your data accessible here. You want to take a vacation and bring your data with you? You've got it. You want to work mobily? You've got it. The cloud is here on your desktop or your laptop. And it's also here on your iPhone or your iPad or your Android device or any of your mobile tablets so you can access all your information wherever you go. It's especially good if you have a mobile sales force. Remember those little thumb drive things that you would carry around? You buy a 32 gig thumb drive for 40, 50 bucks and then you would carry that around to your client's office or you would bring it home with you? You don't need that anymore. Just fire up the internet and your data is available to you at home or anywhere you are. Delete key, you worried about hitting the delete key and deleting something from your server and not having a backup? You don't have to worry about that anymore. Most cloud programs have data backups taken in real time and snapshots taken on a daily or even hourly basis. So if you delete a file, you could undo it or roll it back directly from the cloud server. You never have to worry about the delete key anymore. So what are my options in terms of uh, cloud providers? Well, for most nonprofits, you're going to be dealing with some of the simple cloud providers here. Google Drive, iCloud, Amazon S3, SkyDrive from Microsoft, and Dropbox. Most of them give you free space ranging from 2 to 7 gigabytes, which is a lot of information for documents and is good. Now, considering that every person can have a free account, if you have 20 people in your organization, multiply those by 20 people, obviously, and you've got access to that much space. Usually, if you've got a marketing person, they can handle the marketing documents and keep it on their thing and or their cloud drive and then share it with other people. But you can also get business versions of all of these cloud platforms, which allow a lot of data integration, a lot of sharing within the organization, and also task and project management scheduling. What you see highlighted in blue are the best in class. So, for example, Google Drive offers 16 terabytes of space, which is a lot of information. The price per year goes to Amazon S3, which is about $30 for 100 gigabytes. The price per gigabyte also goes to Amazon S3, which is about 30 cents per gigabyte. Access goes to Dropbox. It's just available on more platforms than anyone else. And then some other considerations to take into effect are the type of applications you can use. Google Drive, for example, in our opinion, takes the cake here. It integrates your mail, your documents, your contacts your tasks, calendars, advertising with Google AdWords, collaboration with Google Drive, sharing documents like we spoke about before, and a lot more. iCloud is used on the least amount of devices. It's basically Mac platform only. Amazon S3 is just a drive. It doesn't really integrate with a lot of applications. SkyDrive is Windows-based, although it is accessible in a lot of mobile platforms. And Dropbox is basically a drive. And they do have application interactions, and they are integrated with a lot of platforms. So which one is best for you then? Well, start off by assessing how much space you need because you're going to pay by size first. Then you want to discuss which platform you need. If you're on Android, you might want to integrate with Google Drive. It integrates with the most platforms in that area. If you're on iPhone and only use Mac-based products, iCloud might be right for you. If you need mobile access, all of them offer some sort of mobile access, but some have better native applications for your iOS and Android devices. You might think about using those platforms directly. And then do you need collaboration? Because certain levels of collaboration are only going to be available on certain platforms. If you need real-time collaboration, you're pretty much talking about Google Drive or SkyDrive. iCloud doesn't offer real-time collaboration where you can see what each other are working on at the same time. So let's be practical and talk about some practical uses of this. Here's a real world example of a legal clinic which has volunteers that does intake for indigent clients on the iPad. That information is immediately input into the CRM where staff attorneys can look at that data and complete their legal templates based on that data that was taken on the iPad on location. Now all of these attorneys are volunteers. They work from their own homes and their own offices. They access the data when they need to. They could pull up that case information anywhere in the office, on their desktops, on their laptops, on mobile phones. They could then assign tasks for those caseworkers to do again in the field. Those caseworkers take their phones and their laptops and their mobile devices. They go back into the client's homes, get more information. Again, all of that is uploaded 
and searchable through the CRM. All of that is completed and filed online, done with no central office, only one website and one CRM. And they bring together all of these volunteers to make this program work. Here's another example. We were hired to do some fundraising for a small nonprofit in California. And what we did was we collaborated with that organization in California and we created a grant online. Over one weekend, we wrote using Google Spreadsheet and Google Documents that we shared with the client, we wrote that grant together. We had all the information we needed, the other information we got the client online over the course of the weekend, and we wrote that grant from start to finish online in real time. They could see what I was writing, I could see what they were writing. At the end, and just a few months later, they were awarded $20,000 for that grant. The total cost of this project was $2,000. We estimate the hours invested uh, through the grant writing itself and through the follow-up with that foundation to be about 60 hours. So if you start to look at the analytics, that's a 900% return on investment. That is an amazing return on investment for a grant or for any type of investment for a nonprofit organization. What that returned to them was $300 for every hour that they invested in working on this project. Now that's an amazing number. That's like a number you would see for a lawyer fee or some sort of high paid CPA to make $300 an hour is amazing. And it's way more than what you would normally take in with a nonprofit organization, way more than what you would get paid in salary. So to get back $300 for every hour that you invest in this project is amazing. These are real world examples of how the cloud is working for nonprofits. If you'd like to get more information on this uh, presentation or to download the presentation directly, go to orgspring.com forward slash cloud. There you'll find a document giving you 15 free tech resources for nonprofits. You'll find a copy of this presentation. You could also download some Q&A uh, from when we provided this presentation live and you'll get access to Orgspring's tech tips and tutorials. Uh, we have close to 100 tutorials now that have been viewed hundreds of thousands of times online. You'll have access to all of that. The live presentation obviously experiences question and answer. And then a little bit of information about our core competences. Uh, design and development for websites for nonprofits. We do support and maintenance, and we also do online donations and fundraising for nonprofits. You'll see a little bit of our team here, who we are. We work virtually all across the country. We have people doing advocacy and fundraising. We have writers, bloggers, content providers, design development, and grant writing. Thank you for paying attention to this presentation. We hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you've got some information about it. If you want to email me directly, you can do so at craiggorella at orgspring.com. You can contact us at Twitter, at orgspring. And at Facebook, you'll find us as well. Just search for orgspring, and you'll see us there. Thanks again for watching this Cloud Computing for Nonprofits presentation. We hope you enjoyed it.